Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to gut out your Pandora's box to install a Raspberry Pi and use the existing wiring for a clean installation. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install a Raspberry Pi and still keep the Pandora's box active sharing the arcade controls. If that appeals to you, check out that video. This video, however, will focus on how to remove the Pandora's box circuit board completely and replacing it with a Raspberry Pi. I'll try to simplify things the best I can, but it will require some technical knowledge to do this. You may have to look at other online tutorials to fill in the gap for stuff I don't cover. Also note that I will probably say Raspberry Pi and Pandora's box a few hundred times in this video. These Pandora's box arcade consoles are great in that they have a very nice enclosure with near arcade quality parts with hundreds of games built in. It's literally plug and play into a TV or monitor. If you want to know more about these arcade systems, check out my other videos. As great as these Pandora boxes are, their emulation isn't perfect. Some games don't run smooth and they don't have proper scaling, but for most people, they're amazing if you don't want to mess around with finding ROMs or building things. However, this video is for people who want to modify their arcade systems. Many years from now, the internals of the Pandora's box will most likely be obsolete and more powerful devices like a Raspberry Pi 4, 5, Android, or computer will be available to run most games at full speed. Replacing the internals gives you access to many other home consoles and arcade emulators. Luckily, arcade controls haven't changed much in the last few decades, and decades from now, the enclosure will still be very useful for various projects. And because of the popularity of the Pandora's boxes and clones, there will be an endless supply of quality arcade enclosures. So this video is to show you how easy it is to replace the internals. The Pandora's box I'm going to modify is courtesy of Banggood. I'm going to replace the circuit board with a Raspberry Pi 3 running recall box. I won't bore you by showing you how to set up recall box. There are lots of tutorials online that do a good job at showing you the process. Basically, you download the recall box or RetroPie image and burn it to an SD card. Test it out and make sure everything is working before attempting to install it in one of these enclosures. First, we take out the old Pandora's box circuit board. So unplug all the wiring harnesses and then remove the screws to carefully lift it out. You may want to save this in case you ever want to put it back in. After removing the circuit board, you can see that there is a ton of room inside to fit a lot of things. We're going to use the existing wiring inside along with the 40 pin connector. Luckily, most of the Pandora boxes I've seen uses a 40 pin header to connect to the circuit board. And by coincidence, a Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports is also 40 pins. This is perfect since we can just alter the wires in the connector to match the pinout of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. This way we don't need to use any USB encoders. The existing Pandora's box wiring harness will plug right into the Raspberry Pi like a marriage made in heaven. In order to release the pins, use a thin needle or screwdriver to push the tabs of the pins to release it from the connector. Here's the tip, each row on the connector is for a separate player, either player 1 or player 2. Before I remove them, I use some zip ties to keep them together in a bundle. This way, when it's removed from the connector, you'll know that the bundle of wires is for player 1 or player 2. To figure out what each wire does, you either trace the wire through the harness to find out which button goes to it. There are a lot of wires that use the same colors, so it's easiest to use a continuity tester to help you figure it out. Most multimeters will have it built in. Basically, you touch one end of the wire and touch a contact on one of the controls. If there's a connection, it'll beep. I printed out the GPIO diagram and noted what color goes where. If you have a different Pandora's box, the wiring won't be the same as mine, but this will give you an idea on how to figure it out. Since most of the joysticks used in the Pandora's boxes are Sanwa, the pinout of the 5-pin connector should be the same, but the colors might be different. Again, make sure you use a continuity tester to trace it out. This is what my 40-pin connector looks like after I rewired it to match that of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. Just double check and triple check everything before moving to the next step. Just from my experience, I had to redo a couple of wires a few times since I put it in the wrong location because I rushed this step. Now it's time for a test fitting. It should fit in without too much force. Be careful not to bend any pins and make sure all the wires are in the plastic connector. So this is how you use a harness from the original Pandora's box and plug it straight to the Raspberry Pi. Before the GPIO can act as two player controllers, we need to enable the GPIO controller in recall box. In the controllers tab, make sure you have GPIO controller support enabled and then click save. You can also enable it in the recall box configuration file. Just scroll down and find GPIO controllers and then what you want to do is basically change it from 0 to 1. It's already done in this case, 
But here you'll see a line that says controllers.gpio enabled equals one. By default, it's uh, zero, which is disabled. So to enable it, just change it to a one and then scroll down to the bottom and click the save button. And when you reboot recall box, the controller should start working without any other configuration. If you're unlucky and your Pandora's box doesn't have a 40 pin header, you can always use USB encoders. There are many to choose from, but the zero delay ones I've used for most of my projects. The joystick and push buttons connect to the USB encoder and then it plugs into the Raspberry Pi's USB ports. They act just like a USB gamepad and will interface between the Raspberry Pi and the arcade controls. Depending on your enclosure, you may need to drill some holes to allow access to the HDMI and micro USB port. In my case, the ports lined up with some of the existing cutouts. Other options could include drilling or using extension cables. I used some 3M dual lock to hold the Raspberry Pi in place as well as preventing the metal enclosure from shorting the contacts. Finally, hook up the 40 pin connector to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO and that's pretty much it. The HDMI, micro USB and headphone jack are all accessible from the back. Put the control top back on and it's time to test it out with some games. When using the GPIO controller, you don't need to configure anything else. It should just work on boot up. Enabling it in the recall box configuration should be the only thing you need to do. However, if you notice some of the directions are reversed or some buttons aren't working, double check your wiring with a continuity tester. One of the problems with the Pandora boxes is that they run Mortal Kombat and some Midway games really slow. But as you can see with the Raspberry Pi 3, it's able to keep up pretty well. When the Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 come out, they should be even faster. Now I'm not much of a Mortal Kombat player, so please pardon my skills. I'm more of a Street Fighter player, but I wanted to show you how it runs. Here's NBA Jam, a favorite of mine, running pretty good on the Raspberry Pi 3. You'll also notice the screen has the proper aspect ratio now. The Pandora boxes are pretty decent, but they aren't perfect. Even with the Raspberry Pi, you're still running games in emulation but it's better in that the software can be upgraded. By wiring the harness of the Pandora's box to match that of the GPIO pins, when a new Raspberry Pi comes out, it's a quick swap since they usually don't change the GPIO layout. Anyways, thanks for watching. Links to the exact Pandora's box I used in this video will be in the description along with the other items. I'll play out the video with some demos. Comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.